And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Bastion. Yeah, I, I can't really read the Russian here, but this is Bastion. This is a complete English copy inside this box. When we set up Bastion for the first time, we looked at it and we said, huh, this looks familiar. This is a cooperative game where we have monsters coming in to attack our castle and we have to stop them. Is this castle panic? Yeah, you know, sometimes you think oh, this game's going to be just like another, and then you're surprised. This looks a lot like Castle Panic, but it's not. It feels like another game. We'll get to that in a bit. Let's see how this one is played. So here's the board and the board is made up of randomized sections which are just put in different areas and these sections have different mana sources. You can even flip them over but if you flip them over you need to flip them all over just so that the spread of mana sources is the same. There's six different mana sources in the game. There's six different colors of mana. Players will start with one of each. There's red, yellow, green, blue, black, and purple. You're going to have an enemy deck here. There's some basic enemies. Four of them will start on the board. You'll have this castle wall you'll place at one of the corners of the castle. And there's even all kinds of cool special enemies that you can put in the deck. Now, on a player's turn, the first thing is you'll draw a monster card. And that monster moves around the board till he finds an open spot. So let's say this one was here. He would move into that spot. If there are no open spots and he's forced to jump on top of the pile, then players will lose instantly. Once the pile's gone, you'll take the first monster and move them to the first open spot. And again, if they have to go over the wall, the players lose. Players are trying to kill all the monsters. Now let's take a look at each monster here. Uh, this is, here is a monster. This is a red monster. There's X's there, which means no special abilities. You need five red cubes to defeat this monster. When you defeat it, it becomes a spell that the players can use one time. This one lets you convert cubes into another color. This is a fireball here, which is basically a wild cube that you can attack a monster with. This here lets you move an extra spot on your turn. Then players have actions. Now some actions you can only take once, like movement. You can move uh, from the middle to here, you can move here to an adjacent spot, like that. Uh, but more, you know, so you're going to move, and if you have that spell you can move multiple times, but you're going to often want to use one of these mana sources. So to use this red mana source here, I need to put a red cube on that mana source. I will then get three red cubes. Later on I might put a blue one on the blue mana source, which would give me three blue cubes. Once there is a cube on a mana source, you can no longer use that mana source. However, you can free up the mana sources by let, when you go to a spot, you can put a cube on the tower there. When you put a cube on the tower, you can take all these cubes, which allows these mana sources there, but clogs up the tower. If you go into the middle, you can take all the mana sources from the towers, which frees them up. So there's this kind of ladder system here as you do these, then these, then these. And, but you can only do that once per turn. Another thing you do is if you're in a section, you can fight a monster of that section, like this one here, for example, needs three black cubes to beat him. I spend these, I defeat him, and I get to keep the card to use. Now, players have a reference sheet here that shows the different abilities and things in the game. But more importantly, they have these spell cards here, these enchantment cards, that they're going to be able to play. These are called ritual cards. At the beginning of the game, each player has, gets three of them, keeps two cards, and you're going to stick them under your sheet to show that they haven't gone off yet. There's two kinds of cards. There are structure cards. When you, get, make a, when you defeat a monster of the color of the card, so let's say I defeat a purple monster, and I have this card underneath my sheet, I can then put it out. If I defeat a blue monster, I can put this one out. If I defeat a green monster, I can put this one out. Uh, when you put a building out, for example, this one here, I can put in a spot. Now this place has an extra mana source of purple. Uh, this one here makes all monsters that are green monsters, it makes them one less to defeat them when in an area. Uh, this one here, here's, there's lots of different sources. That's another green source. But there's also ones like this one here, which says when you use a black source, you get an extra cube. So I might put that there. And when I put a black cube on, this, on that one, instead of getting three cubes, I'll get four. 
So those are buildings. You also have these different artifacts, which can be used once per turn. You essentially turn the card face down. At the beginning of your turn, you turn your cards face up. And there's two types of artifacts. There are these potions, which when you use them, another player can give you a cube. You ask them, and if they want to give it to you, they give it to you. And then transmuters, like these staffs and things, which can change one cube of one color to a, a cube of another. So once you play one of these after defeating the proper monster, you'll draw another one. You'll always have two underneath your sheet. So that's the way the game goes. You move the monster, you go around, you can defeat monsters, you can uh, uh, do mana, you can move, and more and more monsters are going to show up. Now there's all sorts of different monsters in the game. For example, this monster here has a special ability on it. This monster here has a special ability on it. This monster here is what we consider a flying monster. When they show up, they land on the section and cover the mana sources, and you cannot use those until this monster is defeated. And there's all sorts of monsters here. For example, that first monster I showed you, his strength is equal to the ones, the two that he's next to. Some monsters will shut down mana sources of others. Some monsters, when they're revealed, another monster of that type comes out. Some monsters move to move up faster when they're revealed. So they, they'll go to different spots on the board. And then there's legendary monsters. Some legendary monsters will even land in the middle. Some have more hit points. Some require multiple colors of cubes to get them. And there's symbols on each card. They're pretty simple. And you have a sheet here that lists all your enemy abilities. It also tells you all the different spells. The harder the monster, the cooler the spell is, where you can switch enemies. You can hit any enemy in play. Um, you can choose a spell that someone else has and copies it. There's fireballs of strength one and two. When you take mana from a spot, you can take any color rather than the color of that mana. So you know, if the players defeat all the enemies, they win the game. If the players uh, have the enemies pass the wall, then the players lose. That's how you play. Bastion manages to hit that sweet spot that a cooperative game should get, where it can be pretty hard when you first play it and you lose, but you'll say, huh, I think the next time we can beat this. And then if you do beat it, it's really easy to make the game harder. You could add more and bigger bad guys. This game fell in the same category as Ghost Stories. Now, I don't think it's as good as Ghost Stories. I think it's an excellent game, but I don't think it's as, you know, on that top tier as Ghost Stories. But it, it, I, it is very simple. And the main mechanism of the game is, in my opinion, kind of a brilliant one, where you take resources, but then you can't go there again. You take resources, and then you have to go to this resource spot to take these resources, and then you have to go to the middle to take those resources. And then it, it's kind of a tiered taking things, and it works really well. Because players are like, okay, I'll go here and take those resources. Maybe then you can go there and clear that out so I can go back and take those resources again. And the resources that I'm taking, uh, I'm going to take them here, and then I'm going to go over and fight this monster here. And the monsters have this just keep marching to the castle. And yeah, like I said, you can play very basic and just have these monsters with no special abilities. But then you start throwing in the monsters that bring out more monsters, or those flying monsters who come in and are a real pain in the neck. And this game can get really hard really quickly. There's some luck, as there often is, and there should be in a cooperative game because you need to be able to uh, have things that you're not ready to deal with. And be careful how many of those big bad creatures you put in, because you put in too many of them, they will whoop up on you. But I like this. What I thought was neat was the game doesn't look original. You look at it, you're like, yet another tower defense game. Yet another, here comes the monsters and we're going to stop them game. But then you play it and you're like, wow, this is, yes, it is another fight off the monsters and use different resources to beat them type thing, but it works exceptionally well. You're gonna have to learn some strategies in this game. You really want to be able to get out a card every time you kill a monster. You want to find a monster and say, hey, this is a monster where that's blue and I have this blue card I can put out and now I can do this. And you're really gonna have to work together. And I would imagine most people will probably lose their first full game, not the tutorial game maybe, but the first full one when you start adding in other monsters. But I think that just goes to show that this game is going to have legs. I don't know if this one's going to be picked up or reprinted by anybody. I hope it is because it's a neat, solid game. That's Bastion. Check it out. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.